Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will be demonstrating how to paint realistic skin in Procreate. Now, I want to make it clear that I am not an expert, and I am learning more and more every day and with every artwork I make. These are just some of the things I have learnt over the past six months of using Procreate and have been trying to implement into my workflow. I hope you enjoy this video. Depicting realistic skin is really difficult, no matter your medium. One of the biggest mistakes I was making when I was a traditional painter was using a very limited palette. It is integral to painting realistic skin that you understand and acknowledge the extreme variations of colours of skin. Our skin is not flat or uniform, so to create realistic skin we need a variety of tones to build what we're looking for. First. You should start by choosing your colour palette. This should include your base, highlights, mid-tones, shadows and warmths. I'll go more in depth of what each of these are in a moment. By having this variety of colours, you will better be able to depict skin. I highly suggest using a reference or a model when painting skin, and as lighting and scenery can dramatically alter skin tones in ways that you cannot imagine. I honestly think choosing colour palettes is something that comes with practice. I personally started out by simply sampling from my reference image, and I occasionally still do this if I can't find the right colours, but by choosing your own colours, you are building your skills and developing the result you want from your artwork. Now, here are the steps I take to creating realistic skin in Procreate. I start out by painting my base colour onto my sketch. This base tone should not be anything remarkable. In fact, it should be dull. I think this like this colour is annoying. simply there yeah. to build yeah. all the other colours on top of yeah. to make it realistic. I should make the shade yeah. only a few tones darker than my highlights. Yes. Next, I will go in and block in where my highlights should be. It is okay if they cover larger area than you want in the end, because blending will cause this area to diminish slightly. The highlights should be a few shades lighter than your base and be placed on areas that catch the most light. Over the body, the brightness and colour of your highlights may change depending on the light source, but I generally stick to one shade on the face. After I have roughly painted on my highlights, I will go in with my mid-tones and layer these where necessary. These are the variety of colours between your shadows and your base. They not only help with blending the skin, but also help building the skin tone to a more realistic depiction. Next, I will go in with my shadows. These are shades even deeper and more saturated than the mid-tones, and are placed where very little light hits the skin. These colours should be very saturated and inconsistent over the body. The colour and deepness of these shades will also vary significantly throughout the body. Now it's time to blend these layers together. To blend my skin tones, I always use the smudge tool with Instagram portrait artist Christy P's mini blending brush number two. I always lower the opacity to about 50%, so the blending is a lot less harsh, and I just work on small sections at once. Once everything is blended, I will go in and add in some warmer tones. I personally like a really warm skin tone, so by adding in some warmth at the very end, you're trying to enhance the skin, not make it look clownish, so be sure to be careful choosing your colours. I try to stick to more orange tones rather than red or pink, as I personally think these make everything look a bit more clownish. I don't add this everywhere, and I keep my brush opacity at around 50% and sometimes even lower. I often stick to the edge of the face and the nose. After I have done this, I will go in with a pinky shade and add a small amount in the areas you would put blush, such as the nose and the apples of the cheeks. You really need to limit this, but it adds a nice natural flush of colour that I think is really pretty. I sometimes also might add this to the chin if I feel it is necessary for that portrait. Lastly, I will add in the peak highlights. These are brighter than your regular highlights and are used even more sparingly. The colour of these highlights will change depending on your background colour. I often have a white background, so I use a fairly bright colour. Finally, 
I will go in and add in details such as nostrils, eyelids and any skin marks such as moles and freckles. Then you're done. I think making some skin tone swatches is really important. As you can see, I am drawing a circle, alpha locking that layer and shading in my skin colours to make the circle three dimensional. I will often do small studies like this to practice my skills. This will significantly help improve your own skills and I highly recommend doing it. The more you practice these skills, the more you can refine and adjust them to perfection. Also, once you've done these studies, you will always have a skin tone swatch to refer back to and use whenever you want. I hope you guys learnt something from today's video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Goodbye!